I've completed all the IELTS reading multiple choice questions I found in these books. And these books are just like the actual exam papers. And I can tell you that multiple choice questions have become more common than in the past. Each test now has some. Let me show you what I've learned about these questions, how they're constructed, and what I believe is the best way to answer them. It's Asia. Let's get started. Okay, you can find multiple choice questions in sections 2 and 3 of the IELTS reading test. There are two types of them, questions with four options and one answer and questions with five options and two answers. In questions with one correct answer, you must choose between four options, A, B, C or D. In the other type, you must choose two letters from five options. Whatever these questions is much more complex than the other. But let's examine the strategies for both of them, beginning with questions with one answer. These usually come in sets of three to five questions and may be in section two or three. One of the most helpful tips is knowing this. Multiple choice questions with one answer come in the same order as the information is presented in the passage. This means that you can read the first question, find the answer, then read the next question, find the answer, and so on. If you do that, you always know what exactly you're looking for. And if you'd like to learn which IELTS reading questions come in order and which don't, watch this video linked below. Getting back to our questions. I've tried different ways of answering them, and this one seems to work best for me. So let's see if it works for you. First of all, carefully read the question and highlight the keywords that can help you locate the answer. Actually, quite a few of these questions tell you exactly where it is. In the first paragraph or in the second paragraph. Some don't. Have a look at question 29. We have a surname. Pachidi. Surnames are always keywords. Highlight them. In texts about research, there may be several different pieces of research by one scientist. We're interested in the one about telecommunications. In question 30, the keyword is Erwan Mikoy. In a paper-based exam, just underline your keywords. In a computer-based test, Select the word, right-click, highlight. Before you start reading the passage, briefly look through the options. Don't spend too much time, just skim through to get a feel of what you're going to read about. Then go to the passage, find the first paragraph you need and read it. When you get back to the question and read the options again, you may still be unable to answer it. And that's expected. That's why you should assess each option. All or most of the options are usually discussed in the passage. You should take each option one by one and compare it to the information in the passage. Eliminate or cross out incorrect options. This will help you narrow down your choices and increase your chances of selecting the correct answer. Look for synonyms, as words in the text are usually paraphrased, not repeated. And lastly, make sure you read all the options before making your final choice, as sometimes the correct answer may not be the first one that comes to mind. Let's do two practice tasks together to see how the strategy works in practice, and then we'll talk about the most complex type of multiple choice questions. But first, a question from section two. You've seen it before. Go ahead, pause the video and find the answer. Ready to continue? Let's assess each option. A, they adapt quickly to the environment. Actually, 
I can't find anything about it. Let's leave it for now. What about B? The risk they pose has been exaggerated or made larger than it really is. Here I found this. We mess with them at our peril. To mess with something means to get involved or deal with something harmful and peril is danger. So this is the opposite of option B. Cross it out. C. They are more plentiful in animal life than plant life or there are more microbes in animals than plants. Is it true? Our passage says that they are everywhere in animals and plants, so we don't know if animals have more microbes or not. This means this option is incorrect. Finally, D. They will continue to exist for longer than the human race. Indeed, in the passage I found this. They will outlive us. They will live longer than us, the human race. Option D is our answer. If we think about our options, some statements are clearly wrong, but sometimes there is no information to confirm if the statement is right or wrong. The information is not given in the passage. This means this is an incorrect option because we are looking for a statement that has the same meaning as the passage. Now, let me show you a slightly different type of question from section 3, where questions tend to be harder. Pause the video and find the answer. Ready? What did Pachidi observe? Here, options are quite similar, so it may be helpful to find the differences. Steph disagreed with AI, artificial intelligence, felt resentful or bitter and angry, or they made sure AI produced the results they wanted, or they allowed AI to carry out the tasks instead of themselves. In this example, each option is not discussed in the passage. Rather, we need to read it all to get the general idea. I haven't found anything really about options A, B or D, but we've got this. People develop strategies to make the algorithm work to their own advantage. And the same idea is confirmed again. They feed the algo with false data to reach their targets. This means they make sure AI produces the results that they want. Before we look at the second type of these questions, I'd like to remind you that if you're looking for a step-by-step -step IELTS study plan with links to all the resources, you can download mine in the description. It's free. Okay, questions with five options and two answers. Each of the answers gives you one point. These questions are usually at the end of section two and you may get either one set of questions worth two points or two sets of questions worth four points. Despite being in section two rather than three, I find that these questions may be even harder than those in the last section. Here is why. In IELTS reading, answers to multiple choice questions with two answers may be anywhere in the passage. These questions are usually in section two. So first, you may find a set of matching headings. So they're all matching sections questions, which require reading the whole passage to answer them. Then you get another type of questions, for example, filling the blanks. And finally, at the very end of the section, our questions come. So you're expected to have read everything and the answers may be anywhere. Let me show you. Have a look at this question, just the question itself. Which of the two following statements does the writer make about the discoveries of the Barnett's team? The surname will help us locate the answer, right? Mm, not quite. By the time you get to this question, you've already solved a set of matching sections questions, so you've read the passage. And if you were following my advice, you've highlighted the keywords in the text. Names, dates, names of theories, and so on. 
So here is the passage and our keyword. The whole text is about Barnett and his team, apart from perhaps the first two sections, A and B. Because there is too much to read, I'm just going to show you where I found the answers directly. Each option was discussed, mainly in sections D, E and F, but we had no way of knowing there would be nothing in C. And the last option about Auckland, which turned out to be incorrect, was mentioned all over the passage. So you can see the word Auckland highlighted in red. I've color-coded the options and where you can find the description in the passage. So if you'd like to look into this question on your own, go ahead, pause the video now. But together, let's solve the next one, or to be precise, the next two. In the question, the keywords are the Viking Age, and I found the section about the Viking Age for you. It's G. In the next section, H, the writer is discussing prehistory, and the dates highlighted in green are different to those during the Viking Age. So that's why we know that our answers are in section G. Now, go ahead, pause the video and find the answers. Ready to continue? Let's look at each option one by one. Option A. Hunters at this time benefited from an increased demand for goods. Indeed, we can read about a booming demand for hides and antlers. The business must have been good for hunters. Yes, the meaning is the same. Option A is correct. Option B is about the greatest growth in the wealth of Vikings. But I couldn't find anything about it. Let's move on. Option C. Vikings didn't rely on ships alone to transport goods. Indeed, in the paragraph, we can read that we usually think about ships, but plenty of goods traveled on overland routes. This option is correct. Actually, we've already found the two answers. If I were short of time, I'd perhaps move on to the next question at this point. But if we decide to check each option, well, Option D. Norwegian towns attracted traders from around the world. And we know they were trading with Europe and Middle East. But around the world? No information. Option E. Vikings were primarily interested in their trading links with the Middle East. Again, according to the text, Although they traded with the Middle East, we don't know which area the Vikings were mainly interested in. As you can see, some of the questions with two options require searching all over the passage, while others can be answered by carefully examining just one paragraph. I find that these section 2 questions are pretty tricky and may require a lot of time. If you can't find your answers quickly, Answer questions from part three and then return to these questions. Multiple choice questions with two answers are more common in the academic reading, while those with one answer are used in both types of test. So, how many questions could you answer today? Tell me in the comments. As you've perhaps noticed, one of the key challenges in IELTS reading is finding enough time to answer your questions. And knowing which question types come in order and which don't helps a lot. I'd say it's one of the most important strategies in IELTS reading and you can learn how to use it in this video here. And don't forget to download the IELTS study plan in the description if you don't have it yet. Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye.